Today we're going to speak further about the embodiment of the self-image. Otherwise, we could refer to this as the feeling of the wish fulfilled, as Neville Goddard speaks of it, or embodying the end, living the end now, being it. In the last discussion, we brought up Maxwell Maltz's book, Psycho-Cybernetics, and we discussed how the self-image, the concept of self, how we believe ourselves to be in relation to whatever shows up on the five sensory experience, as well as the vision, is going to determine our journey and the realization of that vision. To stimulate this, let's play a clip from one of my favorite discussions or lectures from Neville. Faith is loyalty to the unseen reality. I speak from experience. I stood in the presence of infinite love, and is man. So I do not have the problem that others would have concerning this presence that is love. I can yield to him instantly, for I know he exists. I know he exists in me. I also know he exists in you. But you may not be aware of it. I can only ask you to believe it and yield completely to this presence within you. For by him all things are made. And without him was not anything made that is made. Now, he spoke of love and the embodiment of love. So when we have an embodiment of love, towards our vision, embodiment of love towards anything or anyone that shows up on the journey in relation to the vision, then we are living in faith. We are not experiencing lack or a sensation of incompleteness. We are one with the vision and we are living the feeling of the wish fulfilled. To emphasize this, I want to bring up an example that was shared with me by one of my consulting clients this morning before I recorded this video. Now, I wanted a way to be able to articulate this in a way that would be very relatable, as well as also from a very recent experience. And he brought it up in our conversation, synchronistically so. He was telling me that one of the challenges that he was having or is having right now is a interaction between one of his friends slash business partner and his former ex-girlfriend who's also a business partner and they're involved with a number of different businesses so my client is involved with an individual who was in a relationship with another woman and both of them have businesses and he's dealing in business with both parties now this created an unnecessary friction and him and I had a conversation about that, and I said, well, that doesn't appear to be like spirit of harmony. That doesn't seem to be something that would embody the concept of love, which represents the ideal self-image. And he said, yes, I felt that there was a disconnect every time I would want to explain how we can all work together or we could see it from a different perspective. And then I brought up what I brought up in the last video and the video before that when a person sees something, they tend to embody a certain belief system that is related to what they see. And if they see conflict, their beliefs are gonna be based on that perspective. Just like how we were saying that when you have a vision, there comes with it certain belief systems, a body of beliefs that are in relation to and in harmony with the vision. And some visions seem to have similar belief systems as other visions, and some visions have different beliefs or belief systems than other visions. What we want, however, is to maintain consistency towards our vision and incorporate and embody and live the ideal beliefs that are in relation to the vision. And the core of it all is love. Now that's stated. When him and I had this conversation, we looked at it from that perspective and I said, what you're looking to do is embody love, right? 
And he said, yes, he's known as somebody in his community and his relationships with his friends, clients, and so forth as someone that brings people together. And in this particular circumstance, he was finding it to be very challenging. And I said, one of the reasons why this could be the case is because you seem to identify with some of their beliefs when you're having conversation with them and you're forgetting your true beliefs that represent your ideal state of mind. And you seem to fall into different states in the conversation. What we want is to continuously embody that true belief of love and spirit of harmony between all three parties. And from that, in the interaction, you'll be able to say the right thing at the right time and you'll know what you need to do or not do and it will externalize as a harmonious conclusion to this particular challenge that all three of you are having. Now, this is something that we do in leadership. This is something we do in business, in entrepreneurship, in day-to-day -day life. Our goal is to bring forth a spirit of harmony and to create a more flow-based journey to the destination. Now, from a third party's perspective, I'm looking at the interaction and I'm seeing how they're all of right from certain perspectives. However, deep down, they all want the harmony. And he, being the facilitator of that, because he's the interpreter of it, has to look at it from the perspective of his perspective or his embodiment. Because those individuals represent elements within his consciousness. And if there's disharmony within the interaction, he has to remember that the truth of the matter is, from his vision, is dealing with his friends and business partners from a spirit of harmony. As he embodies that more so in that moment, he will notice that he won't move into different states of mind that may appear as suggestion for different beliefs that are not in harmony with the vision. He is still the interpreter from within. So the premise of this conversation is a reflection of that particular interaction as well as what Neville speaks of, embodiment, living the feeling of the wish fulfilled, which then is represented as how we maintain our interactions with others on the journey, as well as interactions or integration with any five sensory experience on the journey to the fulfillment. So embodiment, what does it mean? Well, here are some textbook definitions and some synonyms. A tangible or visible form of an idea, quality, or feeling. So the feeling of the wish fulfilled for him is a spirit of harmony-based journey to the destination. Interacting with his team members, his vendors, his clients and business partners and friends from a place of love. That's the embodiment of what he has selected for his vision. So he wants to create the business success, but he wants to do it with his friends and team members, and they all want to move forward together, not just in the individual businesses, but as a mastermind, as a team, as a group of businesses that are syndicated to bring forth a higher level of success mutually so they can all deal with each other harmoniously, multidimensionally. That's the representation in the mind's eye. He saw that vision. Now, the tangible or the embodiment of it is the feeling of the wish fulfilled. How does he feel when he is interacting with the people, with the team members, with the clients, with the vendors, etc.? Now, that's determined by the level of conviction, number one, the identifying with the true beliefs, number two, the ability to what we sometimes refer to as maintain the frame in neuro-linguistic programming, we call this frame control, which is your ability to maintain that state regardless of what anybody says or communicates, which implies certain things, knowing that the interpretation is from within and based on our inner dialogue, our inner conversation, we're able to maintain that frame, which actually is the frame that they all want, which is the depth, which is love. The representation or expression of something in a tangible or visible form. So how would this appear from a third party perspective if you were observing him embodying that frame or that state of love while he was interacting 
with both parties. Well, you'll see he'll be communicating very smoothly. They will be listening attentively. They will be connecting with each other. They'll be resolving their difference, and then they will come up to an agreement of how to move forward. That's how you know somebody is living the philosophy. They are embodying it. So some synonyms, a personification, incarnation, incorporation, realization, expression, representation, symbol, and ideal. All of these are embodiments of what is within the imagination. So we imagine it first. We assume it to be a certain way. We recognize it's a certain way. And then from that recognition, we externalize it in this five sensory experience through the embodiment of it, as well as the embodiment of it in others. So we're talking about degree of embodiment. So Neville states, the mind always behaves according to the assumption with which it starts. Therefore, to experience success, we must assume that we are successful. So from his perspective, he must assume that he is the spirit of harmony-based leader that is able to bring people together, no matter what the circumstances. Now, this can be experienced as challenging in some of these circumstances, because he's very good at doing this, but in this particular circumstance, it was a lot more challenging. Why is that the case? Well, that's because it poses an opportunity. These circumstances reveal what we would call inaccurate thinking. And accurate thinking and intuitive understanding, as discussed in our previous videos, is found on the journey to realizing your vision. So the accurate thinking is, from this perspective, all people that show up within his awareness that he deals with are in the spirit of harmony to bring forth the vision, benefit for them, him, and divine and evolution. Now that's stated because he recognized that conceptually in the mind, in that moment, and I recommend it with him, actually even keeping on his phone reminders of this. For example, a while back, I read this book called The Charisma Myth by Olivia Fox Cabane. And she said in this book that there are three elements of charisma. Power, which represents direction and precision. Presence, which represents what we would refer to as the power of now by Eckhart Tolle. Any concepts related to that, the deep presence. And warmth, the ability to communicate in a way that is one with and not condemning to another person. These elements of charisma, when integrated and can be integrated to a higher degree, bring forth a higher degree of frame, which externalizes as other people being very receptive, or so it appears, receptive to what we are communicating. In other words, we create the spirit of harmony. Now, I actually carried that around with me on my phone, and I would reflect upon the various interactions that I would have each day, and I would ask myself, where am I and where am I not embodying these particular elements that are in harmony with being power, presence, and warmth, charisma? Because I knew that it was going to help me produce a higher level of success as I would move forward in my consulting endeavors. So I suggested to him doing the same thing, right? These affirmations down. I said, say all people at the depth of their being represent a love. Number two, all people are moving forward towards the spirit of harmony, of love. And number three, I have the ability to, as the facilitator and the interpreter of this experience, through my level of conviction and being, externalize them reflecting the embodiment of love that I have. And I said you would read these and you would keep them with you. So before you go into the interaction, you would be reminded of how it actually is. And... From there, what would happen is that when you're interacting with them, it would be brought to your consciousness as needed if you ever found yourself becoming reactive to what they are saying, maintaining the ideal state of mind, and bringing everyone into the spirit of harmony that they truly desire. And Neville states, in relation to this, we must live wholly on the level of imagination itself, and it must be consciously and deliberately undertaken. It doesn't matter if at the present moment external facts deny the truth of your assumption. If you persist in your assumption, it will become a fact. So by looking at his example and saying, 
the persistence and external facts. We're talking about what we're interpreting about the external elements and assuming them to be facts and changing our relation to them to how it actually is, which is the embodiment of love, the spirit of harmony. Now, going back to our synonyms here, it's the incorporation of our ideal self-image into the interaction present now, asking ourselves, are we embodying ourselves, such as the example of power, presence, and warmth? Are we embodying those elements in relation to our vision? Now, the power, presence, and warmth elements are very important, and I talk about them a lot in our conversations, as well as I indirectly talk about it a lot, because I found those elements to be very helpful for entrepreneurs, business owners, sales, anyone that's in the space of the discussions that we do, which is career, entrepreneurship, even relationships, and actually can be incorporated in all kinds of relationships. Symbol. As an embodiment of the vision, the feeling of the wish fulfilled, you are a symbol. You represent, you embody. Life is made up of symbols. Actually, for thousands of years, this is how we would communicate with each other through symbols, stories, and metaphors. It's only in, you could say, recent times when compared to the journey of the human species that we learn to communicate effectively or articulate through putting words together in certain sequences to convey a message. But for long periods of time throughout the journey, we communicated through symbols. We're still communicating through symbols. Words have symbolic meaning. If you say one word to a person, it'll awaken certain symbolic representations in their imagination, that particular word, such as if you use the word entrepreneur. But you say that same word to another person, and it'll awaken different symbolic interpretations of that particular word. Now, for the context of what we're referring to here, we want to symbolically represent our ideal self-image by living in the way that will be the ideal such as the discussion I did on the flow base day, which is, to the best of your ability, incorporating what you would see yourself doing in the ideal self-image in this present moment and now, recognizing that you are already that person right now. You become a representation of that vision through the embodiment. So he had an opportunity, and we all do, have an opportunity to practice this all throughout the journey. And by practicing it all throughout the journey, we move into a higher degree of embodiment of the self-image. And as mentioned in the Maxwell Maltz discussion, including the original discussion I did on his book, which I'll put a link in the description for, the self-image or the concept of self, and that's so much of what Neville's work focuses on, changing the concept of self, or more accurately put, resembling or reflecting or affirming the concept of self in relation to the vision. Now, by embodying the concept of self and also affirming it in the mind's eye, embodiment in the being, five sensory experience, and reverting back to the different experiences we're having each day and translating it over to the ideal self image in the mind's eye, we become more of that self image and we live it more so each day. And when he encounters these kinds of experiences, or anybody encounters these kinds of experiences, we automatically know how to respond, what to say, if things need to be said to bring forth a result because we represent the embodiment. Neville says, imagination is the way to the state desired. It is the truth of the state desired and the life of that state desired. Could you realize this fully? Then you would know that what you do in your imagination is the only important thing. Within the circle of our imagination, the whole drama of life is being enacted over and over again. Through the bold and active use of imagination, we can stretch out our hand and touch a friend 10,000 miles away and bring health and wealth to the parched lips of his being. It is the way to everything in the world. How else could we function beyond our fleshly limitations? But imagination demands us a fuller living of our dreams in the present. So it is in that moment where you experience what we would call reactivity, 
to recognize that you can go back to the ideal state of mind or in our imagination and see ourselves as that person that we know we are when we imagine what we wanted to see brought forth and assume that it was done. If for whatever reason we forget it, we can go back to it. Now, in the seven-day mental diet video, and very similar to this whole idea of keeping reminders around, I talked about what I had learned from Think and Grow Rich, which was to write on a card your definite chief aim. And I recommend watching that video because I gave a good example on it, the seven-day mental diet recent video that I did on Emmett Fox's book. And what I found was this was very easy, and I've been working with it for years. So when I find something that works, a particular technique or a strategy, and it constantly produces results, I'm going to repeat it again and again and again because it works. And for me, working with audio affirmations as well as reading a card that I've written out my definite chief on and prayer works perfectly. So what I do is if I found myself in a different state of mind is I pull out the card. So in a way, I was saying to him that he could do the same thing. He could do that with his definite chief aim card or he could use those three points that I gave to them as a mind calibrator and prior to the meeting with anyone that he's dealing with, he could read that card and then bring himself into that state of mind that is reflective of those elements, thus embody those elements and go into the presentation or the conversation. Neville states, always looking for physical causation, man cannot believe he imagined anything that could have produced such a physical effect. Yet I tell you, as you sit alone and imagine, you are setting a cause in motion. And when you see its effects, you may deny the imaginal scene, but your now is alive and real to you because of an imaginal act on your part and for no other reason. So when you react to what somebody says or certain information, you'll notice that you'll start imagining certain things, potential outcomes. For example, I speak a lot about this when it comes to sales and business dealings. When somebody gets a rejection or an objection, and they're not consciously working with their imagination, they may react to it and find themselves in a visual scene representation of what that implies, and that was done subconsciously, such as, now that they got this rejection, they might not produce the end result. Now, if they were mindful of it, and they recognized that the rejection and objection was not in denial of the outcome, Rather than seeing that in their mind's eye, they would see something else, such as what can be done about it. Maybe they would change their unique selling proposition or something to do with the business realm, or they see themselves automatically responding in a way that facilitates the sale. And through that imaginal scene, they actually find themselves responding in a way that would be ideal. Now that's happening real time. In order to awaken these kind of real-time responses, one wants to maintain an ideal mental diet. Because a mental diet causes us to associate with positive and affirmative thoughts in relation to our vision, rather than dwelling in the negative thoughts. So we talked about this and said, for whatever the reason may be, negative thoughts may show up. But our goal is to not identify with those negative thoughts is to release from those negative thoughts. And one of the easiest ways of doing it is reading your definite chief aim card or imagining the end result that would imply an optimal moving forward in the direction. So Neville states, we are told that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But do we know that man's thinking follows the tracks laid down in his inner conversations? To turn the tracks to which he is tied in the direction in which he wants to go, he must put off his former conversation which is called in the Bible the old man, and be renewed in the spirit of his mind. Speech is the image of mind, therefore to change his mind, he must first change his speech. By speech it is meant those mental conversations we carry on with ourselves. So as mentioned, we imagine, or we symbolize, or we work with our mind from the perspective of speech, because the words that we put together and the interpretations form the symbols that impress the subconscious. So by changing our inner dialogue and maintaining a certain mental diet, as well as real time in the moment as we're interacting with people, recognizing what kind of conversation we are having as a result of the reactivity and changing that conversation 
mindfully and doing it from a place of flow. So none of this stuff implies doing it from a place of force. For example, you get better at it with practice, and I've spoken to many that have been very proficient at doing door-to-door -door sales. So I was very fascinated by this whole area. Personally, I've never done it before. So I've met some individuals who do pretty well for themselves doing door-to-door -door sales. And these individuals, when I have conversations with them, they see reality from different perspectives or they see reality from totally different perspectives than others who maybe are not performing at that level that they do. They look at rejection as an opportunity to move forward. Rather than feeling reactive and stressed out by a rejection, they automatically get excited by it and they know what to say. That excited by it can be conjuring up in their mind's eye certain imaginal outcomes of how they see themselves play out the outer world theater with that prospect, and thus it plays out that theater. Now through the repetition, because many of them have not worked with this kind of mind information, some have, some have worked with this mind information consciously, but they indirectly work with this mind information through the repetition of just doing the same thing over and over again. So two ways of getting really good at sales. Number one is to just be rejected over and over and over and over and over again to the point where you change within yourself because that tenacity to not taking no for an answer and bringing forth success automatically translates into using your mind in an effective way. The other way to do it is to work with imagination, is to, at the end of the day, revise any kind of negative experiences that you've had in sales and see it play out in a way that would have been ideal. Now, I like a combination of doing that plus real time. So I'm working with both the experience, the repetition of doing something, which resembles the embodiment, as well as doing it in my mind's eye through interacting with the individual, real time changing the interpretations, as well as at the end of the day changing the interpretations, or all throughout the day. Because what we're doing is we're having these inner conversations with ourselves all throughout the day. We might not just be consciously aware uh, that we're doing it, but what we want to do is adjust these inner conversations to be in harmony and in contribution to our vision. So what this does is it changes our attitude, changes our attitude to the embodiment living both in the five sensory experience and in the mind's eye as that end result. That's the feeling of the wish fulfilled. So for example, somebody asked me yesterday, what if I look at my bank account and I only see a few dollars? but I know I am that person that has the end result, which has 200,000 or 300,000 in the bank account. And I said, it's how you interpret what you are looking at when you see that few dollars in your bank account. Are you seeing that interpretation as, well, it may show $3 right now, but at the end of the day, I've got a lot of opportunities and things are moving and I'm moving forward towards my vision and more and more opportunities are being presented, more business ideas are being presented, my sales are going up, my amount of prospects are going up. So thus, it's all going to translate to the end result. Or are you looking at it from the perspective of, I only have X amount of dollars, few dollars in my bank account, and thus, it's not the end. So there's a distinct difference between living the feeling of the wish fulfilled and being in denial. Being in denial leads to stress, frustration, unnecessary complexity, and it's not real. Understanding how things are related to the vision and the embodiment of love and what we've been discussing is the way to maintain a flow-based journey to the destination in reference to what he says here. Our attitudes unfold within us in the form of mental conversations. Inner talking from premise of fulfilled desire is the way to consciously create circumstances. So it's to look at whatever shows up on the journey and change the interpretation within. For example, if I was to give him an affirmation, my client, I would say, I realize that all people that show up on my journey to bring forth success are operating from a place of spirit of harmony. I'm able to observe myself as I know what to say, how to say, and when to say it, if needed to be said, to bring everybody into the spirit of harmony. I understand that I'm being more understanding, more proactive. As a result, I embody love. Through the embodiment of love, others externalize to represent that embodiment of love, translating into flow-based, spirit of harmony-based conversation into fair dealings. 
So I trust that this has brought further clarity onto the conversations that we've been having about self-image, mental diet, and embodiment. And we're going to have more conversations coming up on this particular topic. If you want to copy this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.